Welcome to a special edition of Seahawks Man to Man, a YouTube exclusive. My name is Michael Sean Dugar. You guys know where you can follow me on whatever Elon Musk is calling that app these days at Mike Dugar, M I K E D U G A R. If you're if you're watching me now, you already know about our YouTube channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, while you're here, like, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Those little gestures mean everything to us. Thank you in advance. Chris, go ahead and talk to him. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Christopher Kidd. You can follow me on Twitter at CKID206. And that's CK206. And man, feels like it's been 10 years since we've done this. But we're back at it. Standout plays from week one. And boy, there was a lot to choose from. AJ Barner had a few really cool plays. Gino had a couple of nice throws. Ty Lockett, as Mike talked about in the last episode, in regards to Ryan Grubb doing some matchup hunting, finding the white DB that is. Riley Moss, who plays for the Denver Broncos, and Tyler Lockett had a lot of success. I think a 100% catch rating. So there was a lot to pull from, and we came up with plays that, that stood out to us the most, and they're both on defense. So without further ado, I know Mike wants to jump in and get right to his because the plays that he had, man, my goodness, were they impressive. Yeah, so I'm going to start. My uh, my player to highlight this week is is Leonard Williams, Big Cat. Love that nick- I'm loving that nickname a little bit more, too. Big Cat is actually kind of kind of fire uh before i play these though chris did you see what ryan grubb said about uh, the title locket catch that iced the game you see that yeah. this week yes he said it he said it was their uh break glass play like in case of emergency break glass and i just that just feels like such such white on white crime like their play <laughs> if they needed to win the game was throw it at riley moss now maybe it's just the fact that they ran mesh maybe that's what he means but i'm gonna take that as they saw number 21 saw his skin tone, saw that it was his first start and said, ball game, which is just so, so mean. Uh, and it's also mean because, sorry, I promise I'm going to get to my play, or my plays, plural. But I remember Ryan Grubb in the offseason talking about one of the differences between college and NFL play calling was how good everyone is. And, like, if you're in the Pac-12, you know, they might have some red shirt freshman safety who's got, you know, terrible tackle angles. You know, he's just trash. You can just throw at him all game or maybe their th- maybe their three technique is a bum and you can just run right up the B gap at him. You know what I'm saying? There's just so in the Pac-12, there's no way everyone is stacked, you know. And in the NFL, pretty much the talent level is damn near even across the board, give or take for a few teams. So it was interesting that in his first game as a uh, OC that he was matchup hunting in that way. He was like, hey, man, I'm going to go what I know. Who's they weak link? That's where we're going to build our best. Got to have it plays. I thought that was a fascinating window into kind of how Grub thinks. So that, that may be on our highlight plays next week if they win. We'll we'll see if they beat the Patriots. Without further ado, though, I want to get to Big Cat. Uh, I love this. Uh, I'm going to start with this play. This is first and 10 in the fourth quarter with about seven and a half minutes left. I'll play it through before I rewind it back. A little play action from Bo Nix scrambles right and then just ends up throwing it uh into the dirt in no man's land actually does a good job avoiding a sack here you know kind of lives to fight another down uh, and just kind of gives up on the play uh we're gonna roll this back the reason why i like this play from big cat and you guys can see it on that other angle so you see him from this side just coming right up the gut and just wrecking this play but roll this back you guys have seen this watch the bottom of the screen here i think that's Cortland sutton for you guys have been following us for a little bit and watching Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan torment <laughs> Pete Carroll defenses. You recognize this play. You got the you got this guy in the middle of the field basically clearing out the safety, and then you got this guy running an in breaker. Dog, Chris, we saw Tutu and what was his name? Uh, Puka. Puka run this just joint right here a bazillion times with the ball just going smooth over the backer's head for a big gain over and over and over again. They call it dagger, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it just didn't work. And it probably would have worked right here. Bo has time to step into this throw. 
you know why he doesn't have his time to step into this throw? Look at number 99 here, right over the uh, who's that? Right over the center and the right guard. Watch, watch number 99 here, big cat. Excuse me. Oh yeah, excuse me. Gotta go. Bang. Mm. And then it's just and it's just wrecked. You guys can see that play. That play might have worked. It really pulls back a little bit. Oh, I love that I can get busy with this now. Uh, yeah. Look at look at my man right here. Excuse me. Uh huh. Yeah, I gotta go. Just great, great play. Great play by Big Cat to wreck that. Uh, this next play, I, I told Chris this before he was recording. One of the reasons I picked Big Cat for my standout plays, also he had a, he had a good game, but also it was like, yo, he was doing stuff back to back. So like I said, that was first and 10 in the fourth quarter. Uh, this is literally the next snap <laughs> with Leonard. Over, now he's over uh, the left guard, number 74 here. So that's who we're watching on this play, second and 10, after he wrecked that play. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me go get that. Hey, yo, we got to run that back, man. Look at Big Cat just jumping off the screen here. Number 74, ugh, move. All right, bang. Uh, I don't know if that counted as a TFL or, or whatever. It but did. Just, I think it, it did. did. That I went down as, so. a, as a as a TFL. Let me get that one. It had right. to have been Mike because they lost yards on that play. But I, they, I, I couldn't tell. Well, let's see. I have it written down. Uh, McLaughlin, right guard. He got one yard. They, wow. They gave me okay. Yard. They gave me yard. They gave me yard on that. But yeah. Forward Excuse progress. Me. Bang. Oh man. It's good by Mike Morris too. Um, and then I threw in this last play for good measure. Um, I'll just roll it through before I wind it back. This is, I think, third and six later in the game. Actually, this is earlier in the fourth quarter. Sorry, guys, I'm going backwards a little bit. Um, but I wanted to show this play from Big Cat, too, because it shows his versatility. Remember, in those first two plays, we had him lined up uh, in the A gap. The next play, we had him in the B gap. And then, at least I think he was in the B gap, that, that second one. And then look where he is now, guys. He is basically in like a, what do we want to call this, Chris? Like a wide yeah, he's wide. wide. Iron type of, yeah. Wide type edge rushing. Yep. Yeah. So we've got him on the edge. It's third down. Uh, he's clearly getting a tight end chip. He's going against that right tackle. And watch how my man handles this chip. Excuse me. Bang. And we get to Bo. Now, obviously, he gets the ball out because Bo is actually really good at that, you know, all game. Uh, but he's short of the sticks. That ended up being like a whatever gain. It ends up being fourth down, they end up punting, right? So, like, let me watch this again. Because one of the reasons that they were so big on signing Leonard was because of his versatility. It was the idea that you can line him up all over the line. And that's a little vague. You know, you can kind of say that about whoever. But I thought the other reason I wanted to put Leonard in my standout plays this week is because this was an example of that. We got him whipping the right guard. And we got him whipping the left guard. <laughs> and now we got him beating the tight end chip and the right tackle to throw the timing off of this. You know, because if Bo has more time, I didn't. I don't have the all 22 angle of this one in here. But if Bo has more time, there are options to try to get the first down in this situation. Take the chip move. Excuse me. Uh, bang. And then he's down, man. I'm going to run all those through one more time and just kind of talk about more about Leonard. But, yeah, man, this is the type of impact I expect when they sign a big free agent or make a big trade. I should just be able to watch the film, not knowing who's who, and you just pop. That's what I loved about these plays, too. Like, if I didn't know the Seahawks, if I didn't know the roster or anything, know how much anyone makes, I would have watched this game and been like, hey, who's 99? He's wrecking the defense. Now, he didn't have a big statistical game, no sacks or anything, just a bunch of QB hits and pressures, but he was impacting the game. Like, all of these plays made it hard for Denver to function. Bo just happens to do a good job living to play another down, you know, throwing it in the dirt, getting the ball out of his hands when he's under pressure. Credit to Bo in that regard, but... These are the type of plays that if a quarterback starts holding it a tick longer, this is the type of stuff where Leonard ends up having a game where he's got like multiple TFLs, a sack or two, because there are just going to be times where the right tackle, a chip, right guard, left guard, doesn't matter. They can get to him. So, yeah, salute to Big Cat jumping off the screen, you know, which I love to see when I watch film. I don't I don't count in. I want to act like I don't know anybody's salary. I don't know where everybody was drafted. I just want to watch the film and see which jersey numbers pop. And for the Seahawks in week one, there was a lot of guys, as Chris alluded to. But 99 for me was like, oh, OK, that dude's probably pretty good. Let me go learn more about him. You go Google him and then, oh, OK, that's Big Cat. Like, yeah, he was he was just whipping Denver's ass, <laughs> particularly. And I love to see that late in the game, too, when guys are wearing down, breathing heavy. 99 looked like, a, it was, you know, he had plenty more juice than everybody up front. So shout out to Big Cat. Standout plays week one. All right. Well, I will continue with the defense and I'll go to a guy that played an incredible game. I know usually when you hear the the phrase, the comment, 
if your safety is leading the team in tackles, that's not a or free safety leading the team in tackles. That's that's not a good thing. Strong safety, that's fine because usually you're in the box. But Julian, he plays free. He is usually 15, 20 yards away from the snap. And he had 10 solo tackles and an interception. Mike, you might want to Google that. I don't know if that's ever been done in NFL history. He might be the first free safety to ever do that. So without that, without being said, let's jump into some of the cool plays that I enjoyed watching when I turned on the film and said, damn, Julian was everywhere. And <laughs> it starts things off. The first play I want to get to, I'll pause it here. It is first quarter, second down and seven. Ball is on, I want to say the Denver 38. And they line up, Seahawks line up in two-man hot. All right, so you're going to have your two safeties up top. It looks like it could be man. You have Spoon, who is playing off coverage, so it also, I think it might be zone. But once the motion comes in, you can kind of see that, okay, they appear to be in man, but it is kind of a matched zone. So whoever's in your area, you just take it, right? And I love, first of all, look at where Julian Love is. He is at the 50-yard line. He is closest to the bottom of the screen, close to the bottom of the screen here. And that's a ways, all right? That's about 5, 10, close to 15 yards away from the line of scrimmage. This play is going to go backwards. So not only did Julian is Julian Love going to have to beam down line, you have to also make the tackle because it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of similar to a punt return. Usually the first man down the field misses every time. It's like clockwork. When that punt goes up, the first man down there, the gunner that is, he usually misses. Why? He's running full speed. And the guy that's catching the punt, all he has to do is sidestep you, and the dude and the guy that's trying to make the tackle flies off the screen. This is similar to that because Julian is running full speed downhill to make the play, and he has to wrap up. If Julian doesn't make this play, this could potentially be a first down or an explosive, damn near a touchdown. So I'm gonna roll it through and watch how it develops. Mm. <laughs> that is tough to do. Again, he is coming full feet downhill to make the play. And I think this shows at a better angle. Motion, player goes in motion. Screen play, Julian Love. Mm. Nowhere for you to go. I love that play. I watched it over and over again and just was stunned at how quickly he got to the ball and how sound the tackling was. I know in previous years, uh, this could have been a missed tackle and it, for whatever reason. But this year, they they were on it week one. There weren't a lot of missed tackles. It was controlled violence. I forgot who said it in the press conference, but that was one thing that stood out to me was controlled violence. Actually, I think it was Draymond Jones on the Ian Furness show talking about his game and how he played. So controlled violence, Julian Love beelining it down to the line of scrimmage, and he's able to make the huge tackle. And this is a two-yard loss, by the way. He didn't, They didn't gain anything. So it's not as if... There was posit there's a positive gain. They lost two yards on this play. So second and seven now becomes third and nine because Julian watched the films, knew what Bo Nix wanted to do in this scenario. Shout out to Terrell Dotson as well. He gets in there and allows Julian to make the play by taking on the wide receiver there. So I really enjoyed that play by Julian, just seeing it, reacting, and getting to the ball and making a play. The next, Did you find that stat, Mike? Were you able to find anything on that? Uh, yeah, actually, um, there's actually a lot more instances than you would, uh, than you would think, uh, of that. Oh, nice. Yeah. It looks like there's like over like 200 instances actually of guys who have had at least 10 tackles. 10 solo and, tackles too? Not combined. Uh, solo. That means, yeah, they didn't assist on 10, 10 solo. Cause he had, a okay. thing. I think he had, a keep, little... keep rolling through your next play and I'll, I'll change the filter. Okay. That'll work. This next play here is the interception, okay? And this play, it was really, I, I would imagine Julian just reading the quarterback's eyes. Pretty simple play. It, you read the quarterback's eyes, he'll lead you to where the ball's going. And that's I have that stat for you, by the way, whenever you're oh, ready. Oh, no, go ahead. I, I, I Thank you for making that. That was actually easier to search, too, because, oh, my God. Yeah, there's a lot of guys who have had at least 10. Uh, so, and you wanted to know if it was just corners or you want all DBs or? I want all strong safeties. Oh, that might be a little Or excuse me, free safeties. Ooh, that might be a little harder. Roll through this play and let me change that filter too. I'm on my research <laughs> bag though. No, there's I a lot of for what it's worth, there's been about 28 times that it's happened for any DB, but let me make sure I change that to safeties. Got it. So yeah, back to this play here. 
This is going to be second quarter, third and nine. The Denver Broncos are just outside of the red zone, literally one yard away. So technically, sure, you can say it's the red zone. Obviously, it's a yard away. But this is basically their shot play. They're going to take a shot at the end zone, and the Seahawks are going to be in zone coverage here. And Julian Love, he's just following Bo Nix's eyes. He's just seeing what's developing. I honest, honestly thought Cortland Sutton should have ran a deeper route because there was two players in the same spot, and you'll see that as I roll through the play. But for the most part, it's it just comes down to Julian watching the quarterback's eyes, and that is so key when you're playing zone defense. So in this scenario, they drop into zone, and you can tell they're in zone just by the leverage and how much room everybody's getting. So I'll pause it here. The reason why I say, damn, Gordon, you should be at the back of the end zone because look where the other receiver is. He's right on his hip. He's right there. That shouldn't, I don't think that's the play call. I would have guessed that Cortland's supposed to be the deepest. He's supposed to run a deeper corner route here. That way you have more space. So if he wants to hit the other receiver, that's a potential, but also there's a defender there. So there was really nowhere to go. And also good pressure. And Julian Love just jumps up and makes an incredible interception. I would probably would want, based on how the offense was going, I know Mike disagrees with this. I can't do that. Everyone disagrees. Give me your take, and you'll see how many people. Let Chris know how you feel in the comments about his, <laughs> this take he's about to give right here. Hey, Julian, just bat it down. Based on how the offense is playing, you already gave up a safety, or you haven't given up a safety yet, but they clearly the offensive line clearly can't block in the first half. It's apparent. It, nothing's going well. Just go ahead and bat it down. Allow them to get three points. The offense will get going eventually. That was the... Half class, we're not going to go there. Needless to say, I'm wrong, sure. But deep down, I was thinking, do you really want to intercept it at the one based on how this offense is playing? Nonetheless, I really love this play from Julian, just reading the quarterback's eyes out of the zone concept. Look at this, seeing it, seeing it. Oh, you want to throw there? Bad idea, young man, bad idea. Jumps up, makes an incredible interception. So I want really? you to be clear on that take for a second. You be clear. You wanted Julian to bat the ball down. I'm not gonna lie, man. I wanted to tweet on, it out. This was third and nine. So you're basically saying, all right, let him take a forty. Or this uh, that was on a twenty-one yard line. That's about a thirty-nine yard field goal. Yeah, uh, so I take a field goal, man. Give up points versus? Oh, come on, man. You can't. It's only that. three. It's like cool, you said. That, like that, said, that's right? my that's my take though. Let, let's see what the people. I want to be very curious what the people say about that because to me that's insane. They might That's fire me, Mike. This might you might have to be man to man by yourself. Hey man, you're, you're allowed to have sports isn't about having the WNBA discourse has gotten bad because everyone thinks that sports takes are supposed to be good. No, they're supposed yeah. to be hot. You're supposed to be able to say whatever you want, you know. You know, That's they, true. They don't gotta make this about the WNBA, but I feel like the more eyeballs that have been watching that sport, they're kind of introduced to how many people come in with bad takes <laughs> on this sport people love. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that's kind of how it works. That's what football is all about, you know. I'm glad he caught it. Bad oh, it down would have been crazy. <laughs> and also another nugget, Luca's getting pressure on him. We literally just had Mike do yeah. multiple plays on him. So Leonard Williams pops here as well. He's one of the reasons why Bo Nix throws it the way he does because Big Leonard is in his face and he thinks he can get Cortland on this corner out, which again, I think Cortland needed to take this to the back pile on. Instead, he's at the first and there's nowhere to go. It's an easy interception. Hell, Witherspoon's also in the area because, as I mentioned, that under these receivers running pretty much the same route, just a little shallow, and it's right there. So great defense, watching the quarterback's eyes and zone coverage. That's what you want to see out of this defense. And, man, that was a, a really cool – I think that was a really cool defensive game plan from the Seahawks. They know what Bo Nix wanted to do, and they were ready for it. Screens. And they had to make tackles. That's something we talked about in our latest episode, just them being able to get to the ball and bring the ball carrier down. Against the New England Patriots, it's going to be more of the running game again, right? So what's one thing you have to do? Fill holes and make plays and tackle the running back. If they can do that, we might have more film from Leonard Williams blowing up guys in the backfield, Boye Mafe, Derek Hall, all these guys that are that play with such violence. They might pop on Sunday against the Patriots who love to run the football. So it's really going to come down to can you stop the run? Because I don't know if any other pass catchers are going to be able to find space with these with this DB room. So those are my two plays that stood out to me most. Julian Love, a huge play, tackle for loss on a quick bubble screen that was sniffed out pretty quickly. And then that last one, the interception, third down, got to take a shot here. Julian reads the quarterback's eyes and is able to make a really great play. So the, a player in the NFL since 2000, 
I didn't, I didn't want to go back further than that because I don't care that much. Uh, oh, it's happened about 31 times where a player has had at least a deep. Uh, I tried to filter this to whatever DS stands for. I believe that's called deep safety by this uh, oh. stuff I'm using. So I can't necessarily change it to just strong safety or anything. But that's safeties true. safeties have done it uh, about 31 or 32 times where they've had at least 10 solo tackles and an interception. Uh, mm. The highest, the highest number, two guys have done it where they had twelve solo tackles and at Damn. least one interception. Uh, let's do a fun trivia game before we get out of here. One of those players is Charles Woodson. Wow, the that other, makes sense. I will, I will give you, mm, I will give you two guesses at who the other player who's done it is, and I will make this very easy for you. It is a Seahawk. Earl Thomas. Do, do, do. That's one guess and is incorrect. Do, oh, wow. Do, 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 Dang, so it's not do, Earl. Do, 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 I, guess I have to go Cam Chancellor. Do, do, do. Also incorrect. The answer is Jordan Babineau. Big play Babs did wow. it in week 12 of the 2009 season against the Rams. He had 12 solo tackles and an interception. Wow. wow. Yeah. Intercepted. What's this? Kyle Bowler? Is that the quarterback's name? Oh, he sounds uh, bad. Yeah. Throwing to uh, Danny Amendola in the end zone. 2000. Wow. Week 12. Third 12 quarter. tackles and an interception. God dang. Yeah. 12, 12 solo. That uh, that's tough. pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, yeah that is. It's like that's the most uh, in my filter here. Charles Woodson also just kind of looking at all the guys. I think Charles Woodson did it like three times. That dude is a. Uh, <laughs> He's an animal. Yeah, he's a he's a monster. I think he shows up on this list three. He shows up on this list twice with two different teams. This guy is a yeah. Nah, he's a he's a beast. Did it with the Packers. Uh, looks like he did it with the Raiders as well. Uh, yeah, it, ha it hasn't happened very recently. I will give you that. Uh, if I filter this by year, how about like, since, how about this? Do it since Ed Reed and Troy Polamalu entered the Hall of Fame, which was what? That's a lot of googling you're asking me to do. I no, will I do. I'm gonna do it for you. So in the last, uh, since 2018, it's only happened, looks like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Julian is the seventh time. Wow. B that is Buddha, crazy. Buddha did it. Buddha did it against the Seahawks, actually. Um, <laughs> Lost, <though. laughs> he did it in that uh, Monday night, uh, Sunday night game where Tyler went crazy and they lost uh, during COVID. Uh, Marcus Williams did it with the Ravens in 2022. So we have someone who's done it. So now it's happened twice in a McDonald defense. So there you go. Uh, twice in the last three years in a McDonald defense. That might be something to watch. CJ Gardner Johnson did it in 2022. Minka Fitzpatrick did it in 2022. Jalen Petrie did it in 2022 as well. It looks like that was his rookie year. For the Texans. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Jalen Petrie of the Texans. Yeah. So it's happened twice in the last that's three crazy. years in a Mike McDonald defense. Maybe that's the fun stat we've pulled out of there. We spent <laughs> a lot of time on that. So I wanted to bring in some value. Uh, but basically, like you like you insinuated with me having to do the research, it's a very rare instance, rare occurrence. If it's only happened 30 or so times in the last in this century. Uh, so pretty <laughs> impressive. Pretty, pretty impressive. And it looks like a couple of guys did it and scored. Oh that's my gosh. Crazy. Yeah, Minka did it and scored a touchdown. Give him yeah. the Hall of Fame jacket now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks like uh, Charles Woodson also did it and scored uh, when he's playing with the Packers. No, Charles Woodson was like that for real. <laughs> yeah, and Charles Woodson. Yeah, that was actually a fun search. I'm glad you brought that up. Also, too, uh, it shows you, uh, before we get out of here, having J Love, uh, two things, having J Love and Leonard in our uh, standout plays. A, they're two of the most. Highest paid players on the team. Jay loves paid like a top 10 safety. Big Cat kind of pay like a top 10 defensive tackle. Uh, B, man, the Giants had talent. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Giants stick now. And these guys are both players from the Giants that liked playing in New York, you know. And the Giants gave them both up, you know. Uh, and Seahawks, credit to John Snyder, finding those two dudes. If those dudes, excuse me, if those two dudes keep balling out uh, in our standout plays, Seahawks are going to have a good year. But yeah, that was, I thought about that as you were. Going two former Giants. You now the Giants suck <laughs> real bad. Their Probably front's the still good. <laughs> but boy, boy, could they use a playmaker like Julian on the back end, boy? Oof. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, yeah. they're especially the Lego of Xavier McKinney with the Packers yeah, now. No. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, had, he had a pick, I think, in his first uh, first game with the uh, Packers as well. I think he Damn, picked off Jalen Hurts. Giants are doing it all wrong. <laughs> Hard knocks was very revealing, boy. It was a very <laughs> revealing offseason. Hard knocks. But, yeah, I like those plays from Julian. The safeties played really well. The, the film, before we get out of here, the film confirmed what we thought post game. I think someone asked us about the safeties. It yeah. Like the safeties were just light. They were lights out. The DB room in general was very solid. But the safeties in particular, Rayshon and Jay Love and even Kayvon, who forced the fumble, like they were just they were nails all game, making big plays, uh, just tackled well in space. Like you showed, like there was just so much of where if they had missed, it would have looked really bad. And instead, I think there was only one miss in space. Forget who it was. It was Julian. Um, it was, was Julian. The, OK. Yeah, it was to the Seahawks sideline and he just he just missed it. Just one yeah. out of all the tackles he had. That was his one miss. <laughs> yeah, one miss in space. Like there were some yeah. times where guys missed, but they were all so close to the ball. It was a gang tackle ultimately. There's not many misses in space. That's important. You can't miss in space. If you miss in the hole, in theory, the homie's there. You miss in space, in theory, you're on a sports center. So you just don't want to, you don't want to do that. So yeah, shout out to J Love. J Love probably needs a different nickname, or we want to roll with J Love. Something. We'll think of something. I don't know. J Love sound kind of kind of kind of very nice. It doesn't sound like damn. You know how, was, you know, with Leo, it's ooh, Leo, you know, powerful. Well, he got, he got Big Cat as well. I thought so, it was Leo. So he got Big Cat and Leo, two good ones. Jay Love yeah, just big, sound. Yeah. Uh, big Cat, Big Cat and, and, and Leo. Yeah. You can have multiple. And multiple you know, you can. Uh, oh, J Dub. Who's J? Mm. J Dub, 20. Yeah. Come on now. He is 20. Yeah. Cool. I was thinking of like someone whose last name starts with a W, but you know, J Dub might work. We can talk. I'll, I'll run that by him. J Dub, we gotta by. emphasize the dub. Yeah, because I dub. Let me let me try. Let me run that by him uh, <laughs> on Sunday if they win. If they lose, I won't do it. But if they oh, win, yeah, text me, you. remind <laughs> me to ask ask Julian. Um, yeah. Hey, J- hey, Julian. Uh, I know you guys lost, but what do you think about the nickname J Dub? Come on, man. Really, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this is what yeah. you want to talk about? <laughs> or if he's in good spirits, we might just start calling him Sig. Um, hey, he brought I'm, them cigars to I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not getting into that. That's all you, Mike. You see him every day. <laughs> we either call him Sig or we call him Smoke because uh, there's cigar smoke in the locker room. One of the two. I mean, let me remind me to float all those by him if they win. I'll on, just text on, you at the end Sunday. of the game. Nicknames, J Love. Yes, and I'll because I'll, <laughs> there's a lot going on post game. Uh, so just shoot me a text. I'll remember to do that. Yeah, J Love. We got J Dub. Think you can call him Sig or we can call him Smoke. Smoke I don't know if Sig will work though, because Sig is too close to cigarette. Yeah, maybe Gar. That just sounds crazy. No, Gar is dumb. No, I can't do Gar. <laughs> and Cigar is not a nickname because it's not nothing cool about it. But maybe Smoke. We'll call him Smoke. He ain't fast like that though. Yeah, but it's because of the you know. I know what you. I know what's the reasoning, but no. Imagine being a Packers fan. Oh, Smoke is out there. Who the who is Smoke? Is he supposed to be nah. fat? Nah. I like it. I like. I like. He a. Hey. He, he can move. He can move. He's just yes, him, versus, he can move. him versus Spoon on Spoon's pick six against the Giants. Like, Love was running. I think he hit the one of the highest top speeds of the year for the Seahawks outside of DK's touchdown versus the uh, the Cowboys. So, uh, yeah, that might work. We'll go with okay. – I'll run Sig by him. Sig, <laughs> Smoke, and um, – J-Dub. And J-Dub. We can do that. I'll run those by him. Um, but anyway, we're rambling. Sorry about the little tangent there. Thank you guys for tapping in to a special edition of Seahawks Man to Man, a YouTube exclusive. Our standout plays from week one, Seahawks over the Broncos. We'll bring this to you every weekend before the upcoming game or just whenever, you know, they play on different days of the week. We'll always figure it out. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure before you go, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the comment section and tell Chris he's wilding for Axon j Dub to bat the ball down. Uh, hit, do all the three of those things for us and we'll be very appreciative. Uh, Chris, anything else? Man, you hit it. We straight. We will catch you guys after the Patriots and Seahawks game on Sunday. You guys have a safe and great weekend. We'll talk to you then.